Let me give you know, they teach them, news they teach them, blues not boy I want cruising, I teach them, shoes I up and I teach them, style them I use, so the world I wonder how we got it like that. The world I wonder how oh, teach them a lucky like that. I be a big tune and play a custom chatter like that. Build boat chart, yeah, mood for tapping like that. But mine say, well, career won't stop it like that. I try to stop a food, but to hold my chatter like that. Have a big talk and we are go back like that. Teach them. You made the message reach them. Soon, J is my name. To be a tug DJ is my game. Man from garden and matches lay me here. Them a shout, soon, 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 soon. Teach them my name. And to be a tug DJ is my game. Don't the place I Ready, we are gonna do it again and make the world shout zoom 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 I am here vibing one of the most militant DJs in Jamaica's dance art space. His parents named him Rohan Stevens, but we know him as Zoom J is my name. 21st yes, century DJ. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All yes, is well, sir. All is well, I yeah. It's a joy for see the man, man. Yeah, man, it's a joy as well for see it one. You know, give thanks for the opportunity and thing, you know, to be here and all these great vibes, you know? It's a pleasure, man. It's an honor, brother, brother. It's an honor. Honor for the eye, too. Yeah, man. Zoom! Zoom J is making his entry. The ladies and the dance are lot plenty. Teach them already made the entry and putting the people in a frenzy. Zoom! To the right now, shake it, shake it. And to the left now, shake it, shake it. And to the front now, shake it. Teach them, so So we say step up in the ladies club and they must shake it. The whole of them a dance about dub. They must shake it. Y'all like give a kiss and hug. They must shake it. Teach them a play big dub and they must shake it. Champagne in a hand and they must shake it. Gucci and Louis Vuitton and they must shake it. Y'all in a G-string and tongue and they must shake it. I listen, teach them song and they must shake it to the left. Shake it to the right. Shake it all day. Teach them, make them shake it all night. Shake it in the dark. Shake it in the light. Shake it whether you're black, brown, purple, or white. Zoom! Teach them! Let the message reach them. Teach them! Always make sure the message I reach them! Sergeant Stevens. <laughs> Correct? Yeah. Are you past the song gone already? Long time. Man. Long time. Sergeant First Class. Sergeant First Class. Yeah, yes, sir. Big up yourself, man. <laughs> Talk to us, though, brother, brother. Yes. Early life. Place of birth. Ah, Kingston. You don't know. Jubilee. Mm -hmm. Hospital. You know? Back in uh, them days, you know? So, I grew up. Originally, when I was born, my mom was living in East Kingston. Dunkirk side. Dunkirk side. A place. Um, Maiden Street. Mm -hmm. And then we moved from there. And I was before, you know, earlier than I can remember. Oh, okay. We moved to Pembroke Hall. And that's where I went to basic school, which is Pembroke Hall Infant Center. That's where I went to primary school, which is Pembroke Hall Primary School. Now, when I was about seven years old, we, we moved from um, Pembroke, Hall. Pembroke Hall to Waterhouse, but always commute from Waterhouse, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. To, to school to at school, Pembroke Hall. To, to school at Pembroke Hall, yes. Mm. After Pembroke Hall Primary? After Pembroke Hall Primary, I got... Um, Selected for Kingston College, I passed the common entrance exam Mad. at that time. <laughs> so, you know? You didn't waste some other part no money, no, man. No, we never did waste the money and we never have a choice. Because yeah. mommy and me, you know, say, see, that you pass the exam or don't find out the alternative. So, you know, you know what grows true. You know? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. So, so, you grew up with mommy and daddy in the house? No, I grew up with mommy alone and a few big brothers. You know? And I say a few or many. So I grew up with three of my, my, my older brothers. You understand? So I have one um, full brother and then I have like probably like or four or half five brothers. half brothers. As, yes. And sisters as well, or four um, half sisters we, as well. How many how many siblings overall? Listen man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me have a few siblings. Yeah, a few me siblings. Have a few siblings. Yeah, a few you know? siblings. All your siblings but, are still around? Yes, yes. No, one. So my brother, his name is Norbert, God rest his soul, he died in 1988, my older brother. My condolences. Yes, man, no doubt, you know. Yeah. Mommy and daddy still around? No, daddy's not around, but mommy is still around, going strong. The old lady still a fight the fight. Still a fight the fight, you know. You yeah, thanks, man. It's a blessing, that man. Yeah, man, no doubt. Man. It's a blessing. What yes, was it man. like, though, growing up? Between Pembroke Hall, because I guess you would start developing some memories from that time. Yes. To Waterhouse, from a financial perspective, though. You know what? In hindsight, I can tell you this. We were poor. 
However, in the moment, I never knew that I was poor. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because the moment, really and truly, never make me feel like we didn't need or want for anything. I just can't remember that rain or shine, in sickness or in health, I had to go to school. You know what I'm saying? I just know that mommy was very, 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 very into education and don't miss school, mm -hmm. basically. That's important. And also church as well. Church. You could, grew up in the church? Yes. Could oh, miss, yeah? Couldn't miss church either. Sunday come, try to know you're going to go to church. You know? You grew up in a grounded... Yes, sir. Poor man. Yes, no doubt, you know? So, mm. that's how we grew up. So, did you have any relationship with dad while growing up? Yeah, we had a relationship. So, you know, um, probably on the weekends or so, mm -hmm. my mom would let me and my brother go visit him down okay. by his business place and all that good stuff. Or uh, every other weekend or so, we'd go visit him down by his business place. So, we had, we had some sort of a relationship growing up. But as I grow older, basically, um, I started to see my dad less. Okay, you know? okay. It sounds like whilst going to school, you were doing well academically, yeah? Yes, we always did well academically, even yes. though at times I wasn't that focused. Yeah. I wasn't so focused at times, you know, as I grew older, you know, as I went to a teenager, teenager yeah, you get, we started to get distracted. And, but we still had it in us, we still had the potential, and, you know, but yeah. we was always big on education regardless. Yeah, I said that earlier to say that. Whilst you, you were focused on the academics, how the music thing kind of start develop? Or it was after school? So the music actually start develop in school. In school. So while going to KC, you know, KC had a historic um, Mayfair. I don't know if, you know, you remember the Mayfair, but that was our basically once a year event that the school had back then, KC Mayfair or KC Barbecue. Oh, okay. So one year, I want to say it was 1994, I saw Beaneman, Captain Barkey, and Lua Culture perform, <laughs> right? At KC Barbecue over there at Michael at the time. Well, My, Michael. Michael Teachers College was My weird. place that. Yeah, your place teach them. <laughs> that is where we actually had our barbecue that year. Mm. And from that night, when I see that performance with local culture, Captain Barkey, being the man one, you know, on the stage together, that's when I was like, you know what, this is what I want to do. I want to become an entertainer, dancehall artist. So I started rhyme, writing rhymes, penning rhymes, until start DJ the thing that my school now, and I start get a following at school now. Then I say, yo, that you tell bad, we are the baddest thing. You know, Casey split in two. We have North Street. And we have Melbourne. The mm. Melbourne is from first farm to third farm, then third farm to sixth farm at North Street. Street. So basically, Melbourne had a young DJ at the time. His name was Stapleton at the time. Stapleton. A rip up over the Melbourne side, the, the younger part of the campus. I was at North Street. So now, them say, you know what, we're going to do a clash, you know? They <laughs> say, who are the real man for the school? Yeah. Who are the real king of the school? King of the college, right? So, Stapleton, then bring him over North Street. My brethren still in, my brethren came well, big up yourself in the way you're there. And that is where it all start from there. Him chat him lyrics, me chat my lyrics, him chat him lyrics, me chat my lyrics. And you know, Stapleton, great artist and everything, but you don't know Zoom J, basically just kill him. Kill him, <laughs> obliterate him, you see? At the time, I never named Zumji. Maybe I go by the name Little Bread. Little Bread. Little Bread. So, <laughs> you don't know. If you all at the college one, them out there, is it? You don't know the purple powers, them out there? Yeah, mm -hmm. a Little Bread, same way, you know? Yeah, why, why they bring up the name already? Why you come, or you come by the name there at the time? Little Bread? Yeah. So, basically, Scare Them Crow was Elephant Man. Daily Bread. Right? Uh -huh. Angel Doulas. Nitty Boom Kuchy. down the mic, Nick Kutchy, yes. So Daily Bread now, basically, I'm get the name from Daily Bread. Call myself Liquor Bread from, half a Daily Bread from Scare Them Crow. Man. Yeah, because they live right across a sea view, and I mean, live right oh, to Waterhouse. So I say, no, a Daily Bread, a, a Liquor Bread, I run with him. You know? Oh, cool, man. Yeah, so that's cool. how I get the name, you know? Yes, yeah, so we, we, so we pick up the Zoom J part on the yes. road still. So, Stapleton, dead. Stapleton, yes. He <laughs> lose the buckle, you know? Yeah, man. So how the thing progress from this year? Though? So how the thing progress from this or now? So, as I said, as a teenager, I started, I started to get distracted, you know, not doing so much schoolwork, 
as I was supposed to because I'm focusing on yes. entertaining the school and every other thing, yeah. you know? So, of course, after I finish fourth form, I get my marching orders from KC. Say, yo, September, please, you need to find another school. Oh, yeah? Yes. So, so that's about the thing they get, so man. Yeah, man, because we never have focus to all we need for focus. You understand? So, you out there, don't be like me, right? At 16 years old, all right? So now, the following September now, I ended up going to Heidel. And, going, and attending Heidel changed my life forever. Because now I was focused, you know what I'm saying? Couldn't afford to repeat what had happened. So, buckle down, hide out, start my schoolwork. Basically, what I already know from KC, but I just start executing. Mm -hmm. Once I get to hide out, um, that's where I meet my beautiful wife, too, while I was at hide out. Okay. You know what I'm saying? My thing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> so, at hide out now, start focus again academically. Start and... focus academically, buckle down into my schoolwork, because I know I'm about to hit, I'm about to sit the CXC exam the following year now. Mm -hmm. Right, and I got to make my, uh, my mother proud, you know what I'm saying? Because me already disappointed her, you know what I'm saying, by basically getting the boot from KC. Yes, yeah. So mm -hmm. now, I have to basically make up things now. I have to mm -hmm. make things up now while I'm going to hide it. You know, plus hide it at the first time now, I go in a co ed settings now. Right, right, before right. That, basically, go, you know, KC is an all boys school. Now I'm in a co ed settings with, you know, one girl on the left, one girl on the right. So now me now I fit do good in a school because I can't be a dance man in the class, you know, <laughs> make them girls really laugh off of me right now. So yo, I have to put you in the work, right? Yeah. At so, Idel, were you still trying to get into the music or just yes, focus man, on no, school? Man. But you never dropped the music. I never then. dropped the music once I get to Idel now done with now my turn even a bigger star oh, over yeah? Idel. Yeah, Idel had a concert over there called Evening of Excellent Excellence that they um, promote every single year, Christmas time, and they would have like big artists come to perform, like uh, retro artists, like mm. they would have John Holt, um, Delroy Wilson, you know, um, Junior Tucker, and those um, artists come to the school to perform, and they would also allow someone from the school now, pick someone from the school to perform, perform as well. So, you know, them pick me for perform. So, boom, run out, perform, mash up the place, Junior Tucker called me back on stage, much of the place with him. And you know, the thing just start built from there. So, Miss Hyacinth Bennett, bless Miss Hy Hyacinth Bennett, this lady, she's the president for Heidel Group of Schools. She's the one who changed my life forever. Miss Hyacinth Bennett, her son, Cora Bennett, he's the one who recognized my talent while I was at Heidel. Oh. And he said, because when I say, I used to go to Heidel, you know, when I say, I was like the Pied Piper at Hyden. Yeah? yeah Star man. business. Yes, sir. So, basically, Corey now had some connection in the music business, and, he, and he's the one who sent me up to Penthouse now mm. to go see Donovan Germain. So, when I went to Penthouse now, I met Donovan Germain, and I told Germain, you know, Corey is the one who sent me to you and all this stuff. And he said, okay. And I was in my uniform and everything, so. I remember the first time I went to Pentos, I saw Jeremy in the studio, I saw Lenky in the studio, and I saw Sly and Robbie. They were there building a truck for, for artists, you know? And <laughs> so while the session was going on, he stopped the session, and he said, okay, I said, all right, look, you go around in the device in the room, let me hear you. Just like that. Just like that, you know? Because Corey said me to him, so he said, well, you're good me, and thing. So Jeremy is a KC man, you know? So at the same time, mm. me now, of course I introduce myself, even though I'm in a Heidel uniform, I met exactly. Jeremy, you know, so me and him have some in relations. He's so a you know, KC man you know, too. He's a <laughs> you know me, he's a politician to some degree, you get what I'm saying? Yeah, man. So, I network, forget work, so, I show Jeremy at the same time, say, you know what KC me used to go to, you know, I say, yes, so come here, I don't know, so you know, I have to explain to him exactly what I explained to you a while ago. And he say, okay, no worries, go into the voice in the room, I'm here, you So I'm going to the voice in the room, and boom, shoot off a lyrics right away. And you know, whatever rhythm is on the tape machine at that time, you gotta jump on that rhythm. You don't have a choice to And that was the first time you were actually going into a studio to voice? That was the first time I was going into a studio to voice. 
You know, I've been in studios before, but, but I never get the opportunity to, to record or anything. Mm -hmm. But it's the first time I'm going to get a chance to, to record a song now. It's there at Penthouse. So, basically, I run the truck and boom, I spit the lyrics and I say, Yo, the little youth are bad, man. And Lenky in there, and Lenky, I hear the lyrics and I say, Yo, I'm bad. Because Lenky is a technical person when it comes to keyboard. And if you sound off key, I'm going to tell you, you know, but I say, Yo. I'm the punky, I'm so good, man. So, German was like, yo, listen, that song you're bad enough, but I'm going to need you to do another one, right? But, but not today, but it's, you need a follow up. So, you're going to need another song and thing. I'm, me feel so good, I'm going to go home and tell all of my friends, I'm say, yo, I'm going to go to a penthouse and I'm going to the place and this, that, and the third. So, I started to go to the studio now, mm. every day after school. Oh, okay. So, one night I'm at the studio, because you know, at the time, 56 Life Road, that's where Penthouse was. And it was the same um, shocking, compound. Shocking it was vibes. the same compound as Shocking Vibes. So Shocking Vibes used to book studio time now in Penthouse Studio to record there. Right, right. Yeah. So one one evening I'm there till late. Tony Kelly was there, I can remember, and they were recording um, a rhythm. I think it was Isis and Kong, um, Power Man, Serious Things. I got. Isis and Kong. Yes. Mm -hmm. And Ghost was there recording his song and a bunch of, and I think Lady Sa was there too at the time to um, recording and thing. But Jermaine was in his office, so Jermaine come out of his office now about to leave, and him see me at the studio. So he was like, "Yo, yes, right, yeah. he must say, you know, Zoom, what you what you doing here? You know, so I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm just here holding a vibe, just learning. And he's like, no nah, man, it's too late, man. You gotta go to school. And then him, and so that night now, Jermaine told me, said, don't come back to the studio until I graduate. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so now, boom, I'm at school now and sit my CXC exams and thing, you know, which was very successful by the way. I got like six subjects at the time because at the time I focus. Now I graduate and like the day after graduation, my mom said, yo, you need to do two things. You need to get a job so you can start helping with the bills. So me now not wanting to step away from the music, I want to be in the music. Of course, I go down to Germany, go down to Penthouse and tell Germany, hey, can you give me a job, you know, as an engineer, I'll work as an engineer or whatever. And I say, okay, no problem, because I, I want to please my mom, you know. Mm -hmm. So. But did you have any, sorry, you had any engineering experience? I, I, had, no, I had no engineering experience. So basically, I, I asked him to, if I can learn engineering. Mm -hmm. And he said, no problem, you can apprentice. You can be an apprentice here at Penthouse. So I was at the studio learning how to engineer at the time. Lenky was the, the, the lead engineer at the time? No, Lenky was, was a musician. Was a musician at the time? Yes. Oh, okay. That was basically work with um, Penthouse and work with Butcher's um, band. He was the musical director of Butcher's band at the time. Oh, okay. But at the time, Penthouse Engineers was um, Cooley, which is Mark Cooper, and Stephen Stanley. Mm. The legendary Stephen Stanley, by the way. So. These are the ones who actually taught me engineering, as well as a bunch of engineers as well. Um, Andrew Thomas, you know, Raymond Lechester from over the Shocking Vibe side. Whenever they book the studio, right, I would be right. there learning as well while they are recording their hit songs and all that stuff. And they are learning and they are teaching me how to work the board. So I could tell my mom now, like, listen, I'm learning a trade now. I'm learning engineer and all that good stuff, you know? So that's how that went. And that's how I basically progress now through the music. So that was July. And then by September now, the CXC results came yeah. out. And I realized, shoot, my past six subjects. So now I have a choice. I can go six farm or I can continue to do the music, mm. which I have to continue to do the music and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how it was even come out into the paper and everything, you know, this, that, and the third. So that was good right there. Yes. So and this was about 94, is it? This was 90. Seven. Ninety seven. Okay. Ninety seven. Yeah, because three years prior to that was when I saw Bean Man and then I started. Oh yes, yes, building, yes, yes, um, yes, yes. Bean Man, um, Captain Barky, Lou Culture, and I start Bill McCraw and Hone McCraw from there. You now, even though I was relatively an unknown artist, I still was um, getting the opportunity to work and learn engineering at Penthouse, right? And it was developing me as an artist without me even. Knowing it right. at the time, I would learn later. Yeah, because what I was going to ask is, while you were, whilst you were learning to become an engineer, if you were actually pushing the artist's yes. desire at the time. Yes, hundred percent. Listen, man, 
when my day at Penthouse, you know, I work as an engineer, I learn engineer, whatever. Then I learn it and basically full fledged engineer now start recording the songs. Them. So I can remember the first time I get a chance to record a song. Jeremy said, Come down to the studio Saturday morning, right? And open up the studio. So I open up the studio and remember, I'm just an apprentice now with mm. the job. I'm on it, I'm learning for like six months now. So I'm at the studio waiting on Jeremy, and who was he coming to the studio? Bojo coming at the studio. So some a musician left that guitar there from the day before. I think Bojo was working with some uh, like a foreign band or something. Oh, okay. time, and they left the, the, the guitar at the studio. They were supposed to do some work on the Saturday morning. So Bojo take up the guitar and he starts strumming the guitar. So he said to me, engineer, let <laughs> me hear some sound. <laughs> <laughs> so you know me now. Never hook up the studio before this, you know. I always just did it watch the engineer mm. do it. But no, Bojo Bantana asked me now to make him hear some sound song. through the speaker now. So you know, I'm like, holy shoot. I <laughs> <laughs> can't tell him seven or no. Right, right, right. Like, so you know, me did a punk a punk and turn on. <laughs> I take a time I walk around the board. I turn on the, 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 the thing, them, and I switch on the speaker, and them, and all that good stuff. I mean, I try to remember in my brain, yeah. How oh, cool did they teach me? How much they cool did it? How much they cool did it? Hook up the, the guitar, plug it in, all that good stuff in the box. And I see the lights are come, come up in the, in the board, but I'm not hearing a sound. I'm going to the strum. <laughs> so now, I said, oh yes, the master feeder. Master and when I push it up, push up the master feeder, I just hear everything that come out of the, the speaker. I'm just, boom, just light on back into the chair. So I was like, whoo, that was close. <laughs> Yeah, man. So, I ended up learning engineer, a penthouse, and I start doing it now professionally there and everything. Still, who can on the artist side. Mm -hmm. So, basically, anybody will come at the studio, I would tell them. Anybody who could listen, I would tell them, say, yo, yeah, I you, need know, you. you know me, I need you to write. <laughs> <laughs> I remember one time I tell a producer, you know, who come there. I say, yo, yeah, you hear me? I mean, a penthouse, best kept secret, you know. So, when I love for voice, man, read him, you know. Producer looked at me and said, Yeah, so why are you still a secret? <laughs> <laughs> no read him for you. No read him. Yeah, man. So, I got through it still, you know. Yeah, who was the first artist that actually recorded a full song for as an engineer, though? I would say Bojo. Bojo, Bojo, Bojo and Beres. Oh, yeah? Yeah, Bojo and Beres, because Beres used to book studio time. At, the at studio, Penthouse. At, at Penthouse. And when Beres recorded the song, um, Pull up the vibes that, that you're playing. playing. Can you play some more? Right? Recorded that song, and Beres actually recorded it by himself. But then afterwards, I think a couple of days after, Bojo came and put his part on mm. it. And I like the song and Bojo. And the whole thing was made at Penthouse. Um, Sly and Robbie. They, they made the rhythm. rhythm thing. Yeah, so that's how that went, you know, so... It's a good school and you get rid of... Yeah, man, no doubt, man. And all this while, I was, I was basically honing my craft as an artist and I never really realised it at the mm. time. So, Deli Ranks was the one now that really and truly came to the studio, recognised my talent and was like, you, it's your body now. I'm going to start bringing you up on the road with me. So, I suck up now, Deli, Deli now, whichever stage show him go, whichever studio him go, Whenever I'm not working at Penthouse, boom, I would be in the streets with Deli Ranks as well. Uh -huh. As well as shocking vibes to whenever Beanie Man had any shows as well, they would bring me along to okay. as well. And it was me, Ricky Rudy, now named Bling, Bling, Bling Dog, and um, another artist named Shadow. The three of us Shadow. was known as the, the Suicide Squad. We used to open the shows for Beanie Man anywhere on the island, anywhere in Jamaica basically at the time. We were basically unknown, but... We were holding our crafts. So we were called a suicide squad just because it was a hit and miss with us when we ran out to the crowd. <laughs> so they were wondering, yo, who's gonna get clapped off tonight? Who's gonna get booed tonight? Yeah. No, but for the most part, we always match up the place still. More hits than more, misses. More, more hits than misses, you know? So that's why they must say, suicide squad going out tonight, and they could say, ooh, I'm not for this. I'm not come out triumph, you know? So Delhi and, and chucking vibes. Bring, bring it to the road. Yes, most definitely. Mm. When yeah, now did you record, like, your first... Uh, when, you, when you went in the recording booth for Jeremy for the first time, was that actually recorded? 
It was recorded. It wasn't released, it wasn't but it released. was recorded. Oh, okay. It was recorded, yes. So when now did you record your first official song? My first official song was... Actually, Shopping Vibes released my first official song. It was a song called Mommy. Mommy. Right? And it came out on the Ultimate Rock Rhythm in 1998. Um, which, because, as I said, we were touring all over the island with Bean Man right. and Shopping Vibes. That's how I got the opportunity to voice on that rhythm. And, you know, a few of these jockeys used to play it and sat them on, you know, Mal and Young, you know, Bones, Lippo and Master Wayne. <laughs> And Hot 102, so, mm. yes, you know, before, you know, before Master Wayne turned DJ Wayne, before uh, Lippo turned Liquid, liquid mm. exactly, and you know, Bones are still Bones and things. What do I think set up, man? Yeah, what do I think set up? <laughs> yeah, what do I think set up? set up? For the world out there, you know, just a grown a little history, you know? So now... That song, yes. you say you used to get like a rotation for Saturday morning and stuff. Saturday morning and thing, we used to get, we get um, rotation with that song and thing. That was 1998, but we were still building the thing, still building the thing, trying to find our way, you know, in the music business. You know, aspiring, yeah. was aspiring for greatness. So whilst you were on the road with Shocking Vibes yes. and Delhi, you were still at Penthouse? Still at Penthouse working. Mm. 10 to 6 every single day. Or 10, 10 to 6. Or 10 till whenever the studio Today. closed. 10 till we don't get the night. You know, and on my days off or when, whenever time permits, I'll be on the road, on the road with, with shopping vibes or on the road with Delhi Rams. Yes. My thing, man. Yeah, man. So you were there you now learning. Well, you learned, you, be, you became an engineer. Yes. You were developing now as a recording artist. Yes. Yeah. And you kept on recording after that, after that song, though. Yes. Which was the song that first, the first time I kind of take some root and the people and start to accept, though. All right. So now. As I said, I was holding my craft as an artist and I didn't realize it, right? At the time, just by being an engineer. So about 2000 now, two years after, early 2000, like March now, I went to him one day from work and my mom said to me, because my mom listened to Richie B religiously from where I look up in and grew up. She was Barry okay. G, she used to listen then. She's you know, B. She just an RGR person, I just mm. see that. So anyway, reached him one evening and my mom said, yo, you need to do a song for court now, Walsh, you know. I'm going to say, yeah, why you say that? And I just say, Richie B, Richie B is calling an um, artist to do a song for court now, Walsh, because court now, Walsh is about to break the record. I'm going to break the record any day now. And Richie B announced when the radio says, an artist need to do a song about it. I never knew it was a Richie B request. It was a Richie B request. It was Richie B come on the radio and say, yo, I'm calling out to all the artists. Corner Watch is about to break the world record anytime now because he was getting real close to the world record of most wicked things yeah, man. by any bowler. It was 418 at the time. Not sure, not sure, not yes. sure. I think he, he, he had a region there. Yes. So anyway, me now being a strategic Think I know I'm like, yo, I know that none of these artists are not going to do a song for Courtney Watch because I know the artists are, at the time in Jamaica, they are more focused on dancehall and hardcore right. dancehall. Ain't nobody trying to do no song, right, about cricket, right? But my mom was an avid cricket um, fan. Cricket fan. And it's the first time I ever hear my mom, like, supporting, like, the music. The work where I do, the music, right. Because my mom right. ain't nothing with music. My mom said, yo, imagine my senior go to school, but you got to engineer and blah. It's the first time I hear, ever hear my mother support me, like, yo, since you say you're an artist, do a chore. They need you to do a song <laughs> called Court and Watch. That I'll never forget, that was the Wednesday my mom tell me that. So the Thursday I go to work now, I'm going to mm. start writing the song. Now, Stephen Stanley come to, to um, Penthouse every Thursday night. Wednesday night, Thursday night, and mix songs for, for Penthouse and stuff. So, really and truly, I'm there on the late shift with him while he's mixing these songs. But while he's there mixing the song, I'm writing the song. But that day on the Thursday, you now I saw Richie B come by Penthouse and I said, Richie B, you know, I'm going to record a song tonight, you know, because I hear that you, you requested someone to do a song. And he said, yeah, man, that's good, man. He said, yo, when you've done it, just bring it, come uh, by the gas station mm, oh, tomorrow, right, okay, okay. which is Friday. He said, come by the gas station by like one o'clock on the Friday, which would be the following day, and give me the CD. And I said, no problem. So now I have a mission now, because Richie B want the song by tomorrow. <laughs> Soon as... Soon as um, Stanley. Steven Stanley finish mixing his song for Penthouse now, me now put a rhythm up now. Um, 
on the, on the tape, you know, on the tape machine. Extortion as Extortion rhythm. Extortion as rhythm. Never, it wasn't released yet, but I mm. like that rhythm, you know what I'm saying? So, boom, I start. I already learned from Stephen Stanley how to record myself in the, in the control room rather than, you know, in the voice room. Right. Oh, otherwise, okay. otherwise, I would have to press the button and run around. Run, so. Yeah. so, I just take, take the mic, put it right beside me, you know, in the control room, turn down the speakers, and right, have the music the played feedback. in the headphones, mm. exactly. And by the way, that time, this was unprecedented. Like, artists just did not do engineering. Right. You was either an engineer an or artist. you were an artist. The fact that I was an engineer now and an artist is like, it was never heard of. Like, not like now, where basically you're better be an engineer and an artist. You know? <laughs> Triple three, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. <laughs> Back then, it was either R, you know what I'm mm. saying? So, record myself, record the song, court me, and... The next day you now, and I put a little mix on it and stuff, and I semi-mix, semi-balance. And I was there all night till in the morning. I didn't sleep. I didn't go home because I was there from the Thursday morning, 10 o'clock, you know, all the way through the till night. Friday morning. Till Friday morning. And Dedication. You know, rock stone on my IB, but I know I said, I have to get this song to Richard B. To the now, the Friday morning. So I'm at the studio in the morning, and I saw ARP come by there, right? Arville. Right, which is Daville now, mm -hmm. right? And Mitch. Mitch. I see them come by the studio and I said to Avi, like, yo, you know, I have a song here. I want to get Richard B. himself to bring come to my gas station to the one o'clock. Y'all can drop me down there because I never have a car at the time. Mm -hmm. So they said, yeah, man, no problem, Zoom, man, we'll bring you. So Bloom, them, them, them show, with me go down to Kansan Spring now, drop me off at the gas station. I'm at the gas station, one o'clock, I wait for Richard B. Like, so, can't see Richard B. So two o'clock come now. I'm gonna say, yo, Richard B show about for start now, and I'm sure start right now. So I know I'm not coming to the gas station. So I'm gonna jump on a bus, off a tree, crossroad, retirement road, walk all the way up a retirement road, turn from Linders, Linders Road. road. RJR. I'm gone over RJR now. <laughs> so now, <the> security, <laughs> may I tell you? Persistent is to try, man. So me at the glass now, the security looking at me. She says, sir, why are you here? I'm saying, I'm here to see Richard B. He asked me to bring a a, a CD, a song for him. So she said, okay, I'm gonna call him. So she go on the phone, and I'm like this with my finger crossed, like, yo, please. She said, what's your name, sir? And I said, Zoom J. So she on the phone telling him. She put down the phone, and she look at me. And she said, okay, you're gonna go up that stairs, make a ride, make another ride. I'm like, I was so excited. So <laughs> boom, she buzzed me in. Boom, I'm gone upstairs. So Richard B said, how's it going, man? Sorry, man, I was running late. I couldn't come by the gas station, but have a seat, man. And I said, here's a song, Richie. And I said, all right, no worries. So he started to listen, listen to the song, song. off air. And I'm looking at him and I'm saying, yo, this sound good, man. It's a real production. I'm saying, yeah, man, you know, I'm going to put some work in either. This man, I'm actually voice it still. I'm not even go home from yesterday, you know, just straight at you and things. So I'm saying, okay, no problem. So, boom, Richard B. start announcing it on the radio. While I'm sitting in the radio station with him, you know, he start announcing it, say, yo, someone answered the call. I reached out the other day and I told the artist, guess what, to do a song about Courtney because he's about to break the world record in most bowls, most wicked ever taken. And a young man by the name of Zoom J answered the call and I'm going to play the song for you in a few of the commercial and whatever, whatever. So boom, Richard B played the song. And while Richard B played the song, the switchboard just started Light lighting up, up and I start answer the phone and my list. I said, Zoom, we have a hit here, man. You know, so him start take the call them and the people and talk over the call him on the radio. I say, yo, that sound a good man. Play it again. Play it again. Bim, quarter this, quarter that. Play it again. So he was like, yo, Zoom, we got a winner right here, man. And basically, it was so good. Him interview man, the whole works. Went to him the Friday evening. And I was on top of the world, you jump on a bus, go home, of course. When I reached you, my mother hugged me. I said, she, was listening. she was listening, because she listened to Richie B every day. Yeah, so right, she yeah. was like, yo, <laughs> I heard it, yo, you was on Richie B. <laughs> so, you know, it was a big thing for my Mommy, I'm proud of you, man. Yes, man. So finally, because remember, for years, you know, me, I tell her, I said, I want an artist, I'm a DJ, and blah, blah, blah. You know? She finally hear me on the radio, you know, she, like, she believe you now, like, yo, wow, you know? So, anyway, the following morning, Saturday morning, me going to RJR again, come here to find um, Garfield Hamilton now. Because I know he was playing on RJR mm -hmm, the Saturday mm -hmm. morning. So I went out there and I gave him a CD. Right? Asked for Garfield. Garfield said, Yeah, man, no doubt. Give him the CD and then play it on the radio. While he's playing the song on the radio, 
Marlon Young is playing live at Sabina Park at, uh, on the mound. So Marlon Young is hearing the, 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 the music from the radio station now. So he calls the radio station and he tells Garfield, yo, you got a copy of that song? It can, let me get it. Let me get it so I can play it over here live. So Garfield was like, yo, Zoom J, stand up right here so you know, you can bring it, come here, you know. So I said, yeah, man, send him with it, man, send him with it. <laughs> so, you know, I'm a jerk. Listen, well, I'm listen, listen, yeah, listen, 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 remember, yeah, listen. I know by this time, you know, it's two days before this, I record this song, you know, like, mm. basically, not even two days. Yeah, because it's Friday, Friday and I, I sat the man in there, you know. Exactly. So now, so anyway, I end up, um, take a bus, go down to... Crossroad, right? Reach a crossroad, jump on another bus going on a Sabina Park. Reach a Sabina Park, a police walk out. You know, the blue uniform on him. And I say, sir, you know, it's Marlon Young. I come to him. Because you know the mound that we were mm, like. Yeah. Right, right, right. Party the, the upper yeah, echelon party right here at the mound, you know? So anyway, now, him bring me into Marlon. I give Marlon the CD. Marlon say, I don't know where he sells Zoom. I'm going to play it. So when I play it, when I, when I give him the CD, the policeman escort me out, right? Oh. So when he, so he escort me out of the mound, because remember, I didn't pay to go there, so I can't stay in there. <laughs> so when he escort me out of the mound now, I jump on a bus, go back to Waterhouse, sit down. Remember, you know, I literally just give him the CD, I'm going to take a bus, go home, sit down in my living room, Turn on my TV. At this time, I have one of them 13 channel TV where you click, 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 13 channel. <laughs> so click, 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 and turn on CVM. And I just hear everybody. When we look at the, at the match I go on on TV, I hear the whole Sabina Park. I say, Courtney. And my mom say, Yo, I hear a song that I play over the, the cricket match. I'm like, I say, Yes, mommy. Yo, my head start grow like crazy big. I don't know what big already in a month. <laughs> so I was like, wow, this is crazy, yo. So after the game finish, now Donovan Jermaine give me a call now. I said, Zoom, you need for their work early Monday morning because a bunch of people have blew up my phone for you. I was mm -hmm. like, wow. Mm -hmm. So my day I work early Monday morning. Of course, I'm going to go work. I'm still like journalists, right? Mm -hmm. I'm still like journalists. Um, Line up, right? And want the interview. So now, I do some interview, then him send me with the song now, go down to Dynamics now for, for them pressing Press. my record. <laughs> so they are Dynamics, and then Jeremy and Carl, I said, somebody will come check it on at Dynamics, like some new reporter or something. You know, so at Dynamics, I wait for get this thing pressed. I mean, I do an interview right there and then at Dynamics at the pressing plant. So it was crazy. It was surreal. Everything came down at once. It was just overwhelming. And then by the following day now, Courtney Walsh broke the record. And when he broke the record, then I was invited to basically... Um, DJ the, the Sun. Yes, and the motorcade with him uh, all over okay. Kingston. And he go around and wave and, all, and I get a chance to meet him <laughs> and all that good stuff. You man know? thing, man. Yeah, man. So just by answering Richie B's call. Just by answering Richie B's call. Who are the big man in a cricket? Courtney. Yeah. Who are bolo batsman wicked? Courtney. Who give you what we want for a ticket? Courtney. You know your bowling ability na no limit. Who are the big man in a cricket? Courtney. Who are bolo batsman wicked? Courtney, who give we what we want for we ticket? Courtney, you want we flag high street across the Pacific. For Courtney, the people they might cheer. Anyway, in the defense, them will be dear. Long time him a bowl for achieve him goal. Now a full time him collect for him share. Courtney, we glad to do your man and we love how you a perform. Love how you a go on and a kick up like storm. But all when you broke the record, nobody come. Be careful of the youth here, no one. Because the journey no done it just start. Only more batsman out there for feel your heart. And oh, what a joy to that bring to a heart. When we see your boy and the batsman for not. So tell me, who are the big man in the cricket? Courtney. <laughs> yeah, man. My thing, man. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Wonderful yeah. look Story that in a journey, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, man. You know my journey of different segments yeah, and but different what do I think, man? <laughs> <laughs> we soon get around to the that. Amazing, the adventures, that, you know. That was two the year two thousand. 
Yes, that was. So the extortion as rhythm. Yes. They have two songs on that rhythm. Yes, the other one was City, City of, of Angels. Angels. Yes, which did very well to, you know, on the California scene, I guess because I was singing about City of Angels, you know, Los Angeles actually. Uh, City, City of, of Angels. Angels. It was really big. That makes a lot of sense. Side. Yeah, man. It was really big on that side of the world. So, so you use the extortion as rhythm and Bill a name. Bill a name, exactly. Get some fear. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Never met Mummy Shea. Never met Mummy Shea. <laughs> yeah, understand. So at this time now, after because this was a break. This was my performing break. wise. Performing wise, basically. So did you continue being an engineer, or you started focusing solely on becoming a, a recording artist? So here's the thing: after I did um, Courtney and it broke out like that, I was trying to balance the two. Mm -hmm. But then at one point, I had to make a choice that I'm going to do engineering and work as an engineer, you know, nine to five, or I'm gonna go full-fledged an artist. So I made a choice like later on that year, 2002, just focus on being an artist, basically. Mm. And just start recording songs. Many, 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 <laughs> many, yes, many, many, yes. many, many songs. Yes, sir. After, after City of Angels and Courtney, which was the next song that did well? So after Courtney and City of Angels now, Basically, Zoom J News. Mm, Two Zoom years J after that. So now I'm recording, I'm recording, recording, right? And I'm performing and all that stuff. But it was basically two years after that was when I got my first, like, dance hall hit. Hit song. Because Courtney, even though it was a hit song, it was like a novelty song, mm. right? But two years after that, 2002, Lenke put out the Diwali rhythm. And this was a rhythm that Lenky had for a couple of years. He just never released it. Oh, yeah? Yes, because I remember Lenky playing the Diwali rhythm for a couple of producers right there, right? At Penthouse, right? Not German or anything, but right. a couple of the producers that was there, like that was visiting the studio. Mm. They weren't feeling it. Oh, yeah? Yeah, they weren't feeling it. They weren't feeling the Diwali rhythm. I remember him um, specifically, right? Explicitly. Playing the Diwali rhythm about 2000 around that time. Right. And they were like, yo, it's not in with the times. It's, it's just it's just basically against the grain of what was happening. Right, and, they, and they weren't feeling it. And they were like, yo. So one day, now in 2000, now, two years after now, Lenky says, Zoom, you know the rhythm I'm out from them time? He said, yeah. He said, yo, I feel like I'm going to work with you. Know? Yeah, man, I'm in a business. One of the ones said, that rhythm, I'm going to feel that rhythm. Be. I'm going to say, okay, let's run with it. So we recorded Zoom J News. Right? Mm. And then, of course, I was basically Lenky's engineer at the time. So I was recording all of the songs on the rhythm and any production that Lenky had at the time, I was basically engineering you know, for Lenky as well whenever he had a project. You so, make, 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 can we can gloss over that now. No. Many of the songs on Duali. Yes. You recorded. Yes, I would say about 90% of the songs, 95 most of the songs. The only songs I don't remember recording probably was. Showed. I know I didn't. I didn't record the Wayne Wonder song because I was overseas, mm. and I didn't record Sean Paul song because I was overseas as, as well when Sean Paul went to record that song. Because remember, Sean and Wayne recorded after the right, right, the right, 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 right. Um, broke up. So the killer, the marshal, everybody else. The killer, the marshal, assassin, Danny Spraga, Danny English and Egnang. I, I recorded those songs. Nice, I was man. I was an engineer. We recorded those songs, basically. You recorded yourself? I no. So Lenky recorded, Lenky recorded me. you. Lenky recorded me, basically. So Zoom J News is a song. You Zoom started out as Little Bread. Little Bread. How did Zoom J thing come about though? So in high school, right? I got introduced to a gentleman by the name of Homer Harris. And I got introduced to Homer Harris by said Stapleton with my obliterator <laughs> case, right? Yeah. And said, yo, yeah. I'm a producer link, you know, and such, right? This is before I meet um, Jeremy now, so and before I get the link with Pento. So basically when he introduced me to Homer Harris, now Homer Harris was a producer who just came from England at the time. And Homer Harris is the person who gave Sizzler his name. He gave Luciano his name. And later on, he gave uh, Phantom Motion his name. Right? So now, Fantan Moja wasn't around at that time. Right. But Sizzler was 
mashing up the place, young, mashing up the place. Um, Lucia are just the same. So he said to me, you know, when I met Homer Harris now, like, little bird, listen, we're going to have to do something about that name. <laughs> he said, but I can't put my, my finger on it yet, right? So at the time, you now, Waterhouse was very, 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 very violent. There was a lot of um, violence going on down in Waterhouse, and that's where I live. But I was at the studio in my uniform till about nine, right? Mm. So he said, you're going to Waterhouse now? And I said, yeah. And he's like, yo, you're brave. So by the next couple of days when I went to the studio now, he said, yo, I'm going to call you Zumjay. That's your name. And I said, why? He said, because Zumjay is an African name. It's one of, uh, it's the name of one of Haile Selassie's bodyguards, a brave one. Oh, yeah? And it, that's what it means, brave. So the name spelled um, Z-U-M-J. But he, we, I put the A-Y on it so people could know the pronunciation because otherwise people would, you know, call me Zumj. Mm. <laughs> so that's how Zumj came about. Mr. Harris, Homer Harris gave me that name. And that's what it means, brave. So moving forward now, when I, when I got to Penthouse now, the first time and I got introduced to Donovan Germain, I presented myself as Zoom, Zoom J. J. Right? Mad. Yes, sir. Zoom J News. Zoom J News. So let me give you the Zoom J News, the Zoom J. Blues no boy want cruise in a Zoom J. Shoes I pop on a Zoom J, style them I use. So the world I wonder how we got it like that. The world I wonder how Zoom J a rock it like that. I be a big tune, we sink, I we chat it like that. Bill Boa chat, yeah, we out for tap it like that. Bad mind say we career, I want to stop it like that. I try to step a fool, we put out for chat it like that. We have a big talk and we have go back it like that. The cock yard and a match is laid. So, Zoom J is my name. And to be a top DJ is my game. Man from garden and match is lane. Hear them a shout, Zoom, 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 Zoom J is my name. And to be a Talk DJ is my game. We done the place already. We're gonna done it again. I met the world show. Zoom, 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 zoom. Big tune, yes, brother. Sir, yes, Bam, sir, big yes, rhythm. Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> no, you have because you were recording between well before Courtney were recording and between yes. Courtney and Zoom J News you were yes. recording, but that was the next song. It kind of propel you to the masses, dance yes, hall, hardcore dance hall. Yes, sir. Mm. Was it difficult for you though, whilst you were at Penthouse, getting rhythms from the top producers at the time to, 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 to voice and before Zoom J News that is? Yes, before Zoom J News it was difficult to get on the top rhythm. Basically I got on a rhythm if, um, like if Deli Ranks was recording a song mm -hmm. and Deli Ranks would ask the producer to put me on the rhythm as well. You know, like Headache Rhythm was on the Headache Rhythm with Deli Ranks as well because Deli Ranks asked you know, the producer right. the time to put me on the, the, um, the headache rhythm, you know? Mm. So that's how I got on rhythms at the time. But once I did Zoom J News, yeah, the floodgates open and... Ears everyone, open and doors open. Doors open and everyone wanted yes. me on their rhythm at the time. When you transitioned from being an engineer to a recording artist, were you actually signed officially to Pentos? No, I was never signed officially. You were never signed? No, never signed. We had a gentleman's agreement. agreement. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> them are not so solid boat. They are not <laughs> solid anymore. You have to be lawyer. They don't make them like us anymore. Yeah, okay. can, but they, can tell but there were no issues between you and that no, of one, though. Never, never. Still, still my mentor, you understand? Still my godfather. You know, talk to him ever, you know, so often. You know, no one again. No one again these days. And, you know. Yes. You must still keep the link regardless yeah. of what I'm on. What, what role Banky playing on the journey? No. So Banky you now was my manager you now when I did um, Zoom J News. Oh, and okay. All songs. No, I needed a, a, a management. A team. A team. So Banky was my manager at the time. During that, from that time till whenever I transitioned again. Right, from again. Music, it was Banky. Mm. Yes, sir. So the songs kept on coming, and, and, and strangely enough, you know, whilst I was doing the research, like, I was really taken aback as to the amount of songs that you recorded. A lot of like, songs. Many, 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 many yes. songs. Yes, Because that's how it was at the time, you know, you just, rec you just record, you just record, volume, mm -hmm. volume. And when you, were not, when you were at Pentos as an artist, who were some of the people around at the time? I, know, I think Davil was there at the time. Davil was there. Assassin. Assassin was there. Of course, Budgie, you know, he's the face of Pentos. Yeah. Right? Marcia Griffiths was there as well. Right? Uh, 
German outsider artist called uh, Jamel. Jamel. Jamel was there as well. So that, that was it. That was it, basically. So how come, how come Jeremy never took up the management do so, and a bank have to take it up? Because basically, I think, Link, I think Jeremy's hands were full at the mm. time as far as management-wise. Oh, so okay. he had basically Bojo and, a bond, and you know, Davil, I, I want to say, I, I don't remember if he was managing Davil at the time, but Jeremy's hands were full as far as management and he only at the time probably could focus on Bojo, if I can remember well, because I don't mm. think he managed Marcia. She was a Pentos recording artist, right. she wasn't... It wasn't her manager. Signed, right, right. Yes, but Jermaine had like a pressing plant around um, Ballater Avenue where the studio was. And I guess that was the reason why he didn't take on so much mm. artists to be their manager, to like, you know, take on the management side mm. of it and all that good stuff. I could go out some of the songs then before we move <laughs> or chant the show yes, again. Sir, yes, Shake sir. Shake it. Shake it. Big tune. Big tune. Yes, sir. So that came basically after... That was a follow-up to Zoom, Zoom J, J News. Mm. Zoom J is making his entry. The ladies in the dance hall are plenty. A lanky, the musician at the century, putting the people in a frenzy. Zoom! To the right now, shake it, shake it. And to the left now, shake it, shake it. And to the front now, shake it. And to the back now, shake it. Zoom! Step, Step up, up in the ladies' club up. and then I shake it. The whole of them I dance up a tub and then I shake it. Can I give a kiss on hug? Then I shake it. Big song when I play big tub and then I shake it. Champion in a and then I shake it. Bell B and Perry John and then I tell in a G string and tongue and then I listen to the Zoom Tree song and then I shake it to the left, shake it to the right, shake it all day. Zoom G and let them shake it all night. It's true, again. It. Yeah, man. Cool, <laughs> man. You know the thing, but man. Yes, I. What was the follow up, Chord? In terms of song where we hit, I know you probably record some, probably never take on at the time. Yes, but, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as I said, at that time it was all about volume, vice, and really, man, you just know, so without a ticket, you don't stand a chance. True, so, that. <laughs> true that, true that, true you that. Record, you know, some yeah. artists took the road of basically being more reserved with their record mm -hmm. and pick, they, they, had, they had the opportunity to, to be able to just pick their spots and just only record here and there and all that stuff, but I never had that. Um, I didn't have that pleasure. So you just record when the opportunity came When up. the opportunity arise, I yeah. recorded. And you were writing basically all the material that you were recording? Every single song. Every single wrote, song? Yes, I was writing. Yes. It's a prolific writer then, man. Yes, sir. I was writing. a man. million songs. Whole past song, man. I would go in and, you know, paper to pen and do the thing and we study the thing like a science and, you know. Step out. Step out. So. Step Out was recorded for Renaissance mm. production, right? You did a lot of work with, with, with Renaissance. Yes, a lot of work with Renaissance as well, both you know, on the dub plate side as well as the recording mm. um, side of it. You know, they, they recorded a few Zoom J songs as well because you know, we always support Renaissance. Renaissance always support us. And it was produced by Delano basically and Jesse yes, T from mm -hmm. Renaissance. And step out, let me see the lead, Caesar's lead is step out, let me see, we are step, 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 step up in a video light and step, 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 we are party all night and step, 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 we are feeling right, we are step, 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 from our dear light, dear dog, to the morning, soup. <laughs> so that was it basically. That was a hit song as well. It made it onto, at the time when I did step out, or a little after I did that song, steps out. I saw a poem was the world record, record holder, holder in the 100 meters and VP Records had put out a CD dedicated to Asafa and that song was on that Step Out Step Out was on that compilation basically mm. yeah man nice man yes sir nice yes. bad man yeah man <laughs> so, we'll, put, we'll do some work we'll, we'll, do, some work. we'll do some work we'll do mm. some work you have I think but with three different songs titled Bad Man. Oh, yes, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are talking about the one on the R1 rhythm. R1 rhythm. Mm. Yes, I. No lick of fool can this bad man. Come thump on fist bad man. You can turn and twist bad man. Man a antagonist bad man. Nemesis bad man. Man a knock a tunis bad man. Big up all me to get an herbalist bad man. When I sit on this bad man. Zoom, zoom, zoom. To me no teach them who are the real journalist bad man. All of a sudden girls who are fit can resist bad man. Zoom. True, man. Easy. <laughs>
<laughs> we, yeah. we are going to come back to some of the two of them. Yes. Run on our next part. Yes. You know the thing. Zane, but me are listening to your brother and while she have been away from the, the centre of the music for yes. a long time. You still have it, man. You still have it. We never lose it, man. It's like riding a bicycle. It's like know? riding a bicycle. Yeah, man. Mm. So we just answer the call, you know? Yes. Were you ever a member of Bordos? No. I was never a member of Bordos, but you know, Sasko is a brother of mine. Mm. Right? You know, Jeffrey is my brother from another mother. And basically, when, Broad, when he came up with Bordos production, he never leave me out. Mm. Matter of fact, I actually recorded a, a couple of songs for, for Quite a few songs. Know, quite a few for Bordos, yes. Mm. No, no, never leave me out. My brother to this day, you know? Yeah, man. And one of the songs that I recorded for him was um, Ready for Defend It. Ready for Defend It. Yes, Ready for Defend It was that song. And he actually intro that song as well. Oh, okay, yeah. right, right. True, yes. true, true, yes. true. Ready for Defend It. voice this to me. I don't know if a Pento or so Bordos advice that for. That was for Bordos. Bordos, okay. Yes. They're it, ready for the finish. Yes. I think in 2007, yes. you migrated. Yes, 2007 I migrated. Yes. Now the peak of your peak. Carry peak, that, bro. Peak, peak, peak. So when I migrated in 2007, right, because we always was in the streets, you. Mm. I had a song being played in every single dance hall session where you can think of, right? A song named Pre, and it was done at the Pre. Crusher Rhythm. I could have watched some boy, you pray with her, pray with own liquor, with no, no free liquor. Big up my friend with me, Mark X, a real jigger, right? Mad. Yes. <laughs> so it was produced by Mark X, mm. right? For Full Blast production. And it was on the Crusher Rhythm. We had artists like Vibes Cartel on the Rhythm. Um, be a big name artist, it basically on the Rhythm. And it was really doing well, making its round. It was being played on the radio, played in the dance hall at the time. But the reason why I opted to migrate it while that song was at its peak, right? And of course, Mark, Mark is the producer, understood. My wife at the time, she was. Oh, you were married at the time? Yes. Okay. Because I got married in 2006. Okay, okay. So by 2007, now, when this song was ripping up the dance hall, you know, um, my wife was pregnant with my daughter and she was like seven months. Oh. Oh. So one day I got a call from her and she said, yo, because I was, she was in America, right? And I was in Jamaica and I was there in the dance hall, you know, promoting, promoting, promoting. I got a call from my wife, you know, and she said, Rohan, you really gonna let me have this baby on my own, <laughs> right? You know, she tugged, like she hold up on my heart string and even tug on it, she just... Jerk it. Jerk it. So, at the time, I end up, you know, fly, fly up and thing and um, basically for be with her, you know, waiting for the baby to arrive and think mm. she, I know she was like right around the corner from having the baby and this was going to be my first child too as well. Her first, my first and I wanted you to be there. man. Yeah, I want to be mm. there for the birth. You know what I'm saying? Otherwise, you know, she would have never forget it and never forget before it. So I was there. Yeah. And it was the greatest moment of my life when I saw my little baby girl born and thing. You know? So I migrate now. And my daughter born. You know me, I hit the street hard now. I knew we are now. I go here and there at those shows. But I had a turning point while I was there. Because in my mind, I'm like, my daughter just born. I need for me fully responsible for her. I can't leave everything for my wife to take care of this child. I can step up now and be a man. Prior to this, I'm just I was just responsible for myself. Yes, sir. Now I'm going to be responsible for my daughter as well, this other life, right? And you know, we're not going to be in a deadbeat, right? So I'm in New York doing my thing. I get a call for a show over in Jersey. I go over to Jersey with a couple of my friends, like two carload of us, because they're there to support me. Got to the, the dance now. And the promoter tell me, say, I need to go perform right now because the play is soon finished. You know, the party is soon finished. And I say, well, I need to get my pay right now before I perform. The promoter say, well, nothing I'm going to the bar, nothing I'm going to the dance, and the, and the line wrap around the place, you know, man. the place <laughs> wrap around. But I need to go perform right mm. now. So I say, yo, well, that's not going to happen, you know. So, you know, the promoter stepped to me and raised him voice, but then you don't know. My supporters, you know, that I went with, you know, them kind of stepped forward, you know, in representation of me and thing, and we kind of, um, you know, 
basically work out with differences. Mm. And him pay me. I'm gonna go up on the stage and rip it. So when I went to him that night, I said to Avi, like, Avi's my wife, by the way, Avisha, that's Avisha. my wife's name. Mm. I said to Avisha, Avisha, you know something happened tonight and I don't know how long I can do this for. Right? Tonight I was lucky because my friends were there, right? To show me support, but it's not. They're not gonna be there all the time. And if this is the way how they play games here, right? I, how long I'm gonna do this for? You know what I'm saying? So that's when I had a turning point and I was like, I need to do something outside of music now to take, I need a supplemental income now to mm. take care of this baby that is about to be born because she's still pregnant, baby not born yet. But. So now she went to work, I'm at the apartment and I'm looking to like, shoot, what, is, what am I gonna do outside of music to um, supplement and show, you know, support her basically. Right. I can't leave everything for her. And remember we leave high school, but we didn't do any tertiary education at the time. So I was like, damn, what am I qualified for, you know, outside of music, right? So boom, that's when I went to sign up for the army. I signed up for the army just so I could support my wife and my daughter. That's it, because music mm. could not do it at the time. At the time. For me. Because music was not, uh, what do you call it now? It wasn't consistent. It was a and consistent it, paycheck it at the time. It wasn't a consistent paycheck. Mm. This month is good, next month is not good, right? So I needed a consistent paycheck to take care of my child and stuff. And so that's when I joined the army. I didn't tell any of my friends that I was joining the army. As a matter of fact, while I was in basic training, my friend Mark X <laughs> was calling my house, mm -hmm. calling Avisha, asking her what happened to Zoom J. How we can't hear Zoom J. Zoom J usually call Mark like every other day and I mean him talk on the phone. But they not hear from him for weeks, for months. So Mark actually thought I was in trouble. Like I got locked up or something mm -hmm. and Avisha didn't want to tell him, you know? <laughs> Well, you know, in a, in a training, they yeah, don't right, right, for communicate so, with the outside yeah, right Yeah, now. exactly. So I couldn't even call him for tell him. And I, and I got all of this from Avisha through letters, because she had to write letters. I couldn't even oh, speak to her on the phone either. So when she wrote me, I would, you know, she would say, yo, you know, ex, you know, been asking for you and all that stuff. <laughs> so when I got out of training now, mm -hmm. that's when I finally called ex. And I said, ex, guess what? Boom. And I told him, and he said, yo, Zoom, I'm so proud of you. This time and the third, and he's the first one who told me that he was proud of me for what you know, I did at the journey that I was about to embark on at the time. You know? What a journey it has been. Yes. You enlisted 08. 2008, yes. You got deployed 09. Yes. Iraq? To Iraq, yes. <laughs> but you weren't um, a combatant, really? No. Um, no, I wasn't a combat. I don't have a combat MOS and I wasn't in a okay. combat. So I deployed with, um, in support, rather, of Operation Iraqi Freedom. Mm -hmm. So I was there for a year. And what I do in the military is basically logistics. Logistics. Yes. So, yeah, I wasn't kicking down any doors and I shoot off on a body. And yeah. nobody, anybody that run me down and I shoot off on my eye. Give thanks, man. Give thanks. Give yeah. thanks. But Give at the thanks. same time, at the same time, nevertheless, it was dangerous because I was in a foreign country. Oh. I don't mm -hmm. know the language, not even the writing, because you know they don't use our right, right, over right, there. Right, right, right. So, you know, I had to keep my head in a swivel while I was over there. Right. What was it like, though, being away from your daughter, your wife? Oh, shoot. It was a straight culture shock being over there, but just being away from them, too. It was my first time just being away from this side of the world. It mm -hmm. was an experience, and it was different. And every day, basically, you're counting down to come back. That's how it is. You're just counting down. You're like... Yo, one million, <laughs> one million days to go before I go home. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, yeah, it was an experience, but I can't say, nah, mm -hmm. no, it's not, a, it's not an experience to enjoy. Yes. It's, it's just an experience. Even to this day, like certain songs that was popular at the time when I was overseas, if I hear these, those, as much as, as happy as those songs are, if I hear those songs today, it's like I get the press. Bring it back a place. It brings back a place, place. Yeah. yes. Because even the song, um, Black Eyed Peas, Black Eyed. I got a feeling, feeling that tonight was... I was overseas when that song was a hit song on this side of the world. So if I'm in a part of right now and everybody hear hears that song, that song and they start getting happy, I'm like... Because mm. <sighs> I just remember being over there, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You said that you got... 
you became a, a member of the army and the military yes. to take care of your family. Yes. But you also used the opportunity to pursue higher education. Yes, most what, definitely. What, what, what triggered that though? So by being in the army, I started to learn how the system worked, basically, not just in the army, but in America, basically. Basically, when it comes to qualification and, and, and when it comes to advancing to mm -hmm. the next level, it wasn't, you don't advance based on popularity, basically, right? Or who knows who, maybe to a lesser degree, yes, but okay. for the most part, qualification. you have to have these qualifications, right? I, be, I, I knew my way around the computer, you know, before I went to the army, but it was actually while I was overseas, I learned from my like, rest of my military bodies certain tricks on the computer at the time, you know, and how to work it, and I saw how computer literate they were, and, I, and I, eventually I got there, you know, mm -hmm. I'm there now, mm -hmm. but it was just a learning experience for me. So I realized that to get promoted in the Army, you needed a, a certain qualifications, certain points, you, you know, you gotta be proficient in this, that, and it's based on your performance. Everybody around me basically had at least like a, a, a uh, associate's associate degree or mm -hmm. something. So I was like, yo, I need to get there so I can compete with these guys. Otherwise, mm -hmm. I'm just going to be stuck here. So 2011, I want to say, 2010, I started, no, 2011 rather. Yeah, 2011, I enrolled into, a, 2009, I enrolled into um, BMCC, community college, but then I got deployed. Oh. So I was going physically to college, but then the deployment came around. I got called, you know, to go overseas. So basically, my co my college career stopped right there, and I was overseas. So, but soon as I came back from overseas, now I got stationed in South Carolina. So I had to transfer all my credits now and start a, with a new school now in South Carolina now to pursue my associates now. Once I got the associates, business now, management. It, it, yes, it, it was a business as, associate, uh, business administration, administration business, business administration. administration. Okay. So while I was in South, South Carolina, I was doing business administration. It was an online degree with okay. American Military University. So once I got that degree now, the associates, I realized that there was a school, a bunch of colleges on the base where you could go at the education oh, cool. center. So they had um, St. Leo was one of them. Capella was one of them. So I chose to go to St. Leo. St. Leo is originally from Tampa, Florida, but they had a campus right there on the base in South Carolina, on joint, on joint base, um, Charleston base. So I started to go to school in the evening times you now while I was um, in Charleston to pursue my bachelor's now in psychology. psychology. And in 2016, now I finally got um, my bachelor's basically, finished all my credits, graduated now from St. Leo University. And I said, hey, why stop here? Now I'm back Masters. in New York. Yes, so I'm back with my family. So because I was back in New York now, I went and enrolled into St. John's University to pursue a criminal justice criminal degree justice. with uh, St. John's University. In 2018, I graduated basically with my master's degree in criminal justice. Big up the damn self, respect, man. Respect, my my thing, man. respect, you know? My we, we never stop, we never quit, you know? Yeah. Yes, sir. PhD? You know what I mean? You, you don't know that's up there. We're done with that stuff there. <laughs> you know, we're not going to go PhD. Yeah. We never stop, we never yeah, quit in about you know? Congratulations, man. Yeah, as, man. as an educator, I can look on that and, yes, sir. and really, really respect and appreciate yeah, that, brother, brother. Really, really appreciate it. My you know? thing, my thing. And I figure it out. I wouldn't say I figure it out. I figure it out later in life, you know, as opposed to some people who basically have that mindset once they're like 18 years old, to, you know, go to college and all that stuff. At 18, I didn't see the significance and the importance of a tertiary education, I just mm. didn't, you know, I jump, you know, I, I jump in come in and music my one though, but as I grow older, you know what I'm saying, as I got to like 29 years old, I realized like, holy oh, show, I'm gonna I'm on, I'm on need to further my education if I want to compete, yeah. right, basically in life. Were you doing any form of music while, because I'm assuming it would probably would have been difficult for, it, while say I get rid of, you know, for record yes, and them yes, something, yes. so were you able to, to balance any music with that or it was just focusing on military life? So I was able to balance, but it was still mostly military I was doing. I was mm -hmm. doing a little bit of music when I could, but 
I had to be focused mainly on um, the military because basically that was what was feeding the family. Originally, I joined as a reservist so I could get supplemental income. Oh, okay. But then after a while, this is how basically I was making money and making an income to, 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 to um, support so my family. family. Yeah, so that's where most of the focus was, you know, had to be. Mm. So while I was overseas, I was called in Linky, like, send me a rhythm. I was called in Jigzag, like that Sean, Sean Paul's brother. Oh, okay. Send me a rhythm. He sent me a rhythm. I, rec I wrote the song. I came home. I recorded. We shoot the video. So that's how I was doing it. I got to South Carolina. I was doing the same thing, linking up with producers over the phone from Jamaica. I come to Jamaica, record on the rhythm. They put it out. That's just how I, how I used to do it, you know? Mm. Yeah, miss the music whilst you were in the military or you never really have no time for miss the music? I always miss the music. Always Even miss right the music. now I miss the music. I love okay. the music, I'm gonna miss the music, you know? Mm. Yeah, man. You, I think in 2017, enlisted in the, the Air Force? In 2017. Oh, you reached out to the party door from, yes. from the party? Yes. So, well, so basically, in 2017, I'm still a reserve, so I'm still drilling. Right? Oh, okay. And... I wanted to experience something different because my unit that I was at in New York, right? I wasn't feeling the unit. I was getting very like um, unmotivated, you know? So I was like, you know what? Let me see what's going on with the Air Force because I always heard that the grass is green over there, right? <laughs> so I transferred from the Army to the Air Force. So I was drilling now at this unit out there in Long Island, an Air Force unit, for basically two years, but after two years, I decided to go back to the Army because oh. I, the, I figured the Air Force is not for me. Oh, okay. Right? It, I wasn't getting out of it what I wanted to get out of it, and I was like, you know what, maybe it's best I go back to the Army because I felt like, you know, I made better progress, you know, in the Army. So that's why I went back to the Army in 2019. 2019. Yes, I did two years in the Air Force, and ah, uh, you know, it's not for me. Went back to the Army. Still a reservist? Still a reservist, yes. And how long are you planning for? Are you planning to just do the whole, what, 20 years? 20. 20. So I'm at 14 right now. Oh, you're not that far, man. Well, I'm not far at all. I'm not that far at all, you know. So Six you're planning for, for months it out? Months it out. Six more to that go. That sounds like a pension vibration. There you go, man. Ah. Pension, right? That's the goal, that's the aim, right? Yeah. Yeah, man. Six Where you plan to settle, though? Music? Military. Always music. Always music. Always music. I'm doing everything that I'm doing right now overseas right now is just basically setting up myself so I can come back home. Right? Mm. And just enjoy the island, enjoy the vibes, enjoy the people, enjoy the music and just go full fledged with the music. Have you just signed off on that? Yeah, man, just okay. sign up. Okay. Yeah, check it out. Right right you you don't think care, yeah, brother. Yeah, man, man, she did it right there with my man. She did yeah, it right there about the happy wife, yeah, sir. Happy wife, happy mm. life, yeah, man. And that's a good thing with me and um with me and, and, and Avisha, you know, we have the same interests basically, you know, we have a lot of in common as far as us coming home and the love that we have for Jamaica and all that good stuff, you know, so it's not like I want to come home and she don't want to come home. No, we have the same mindset as far as coming awesome. home. Awesome. Everybody on the same page. Yes. Mm. You are a bona fide engineer. Yes. A bona fide dancer DJ with yes. hits on your belt. Yes. But you also have been doing, and you said earlier, you write all your material. Yes. But you have been doing some, well, I don't know if you would call and it ghost for, writing. I write that for, yes. Yeah, man. So yes. you have been doing some writing for other people yes. in the business. Yes. Some big people in the business. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You have written songs for Sean Bar? Yes, sir. As a matter of fact, how many songs you, you wrote on the Trinity album? The Trinity, I, I want to say it probably was two, two songs on it, a co-wrote. A co-wrote co Yeah. Probably two songs on, on the Trinity. You, you okay. write for him outside of those two? Yes. Yeah, so before even the Trinity, I used to um, co-write with him for his even the Dutty Rock that, um, oh. album as well. But I know I, you don't see any credit on it. I'm going to ask you about that. Because it was a mutual and a, and a gentleman agreement. agreement and stuff. Yeah, and, and him take care of him. Take it, man. Yeah, okay, yeah, man. nice, so, nice, nice, yeah, man, nice. Sean is really... A great individual, you know. So even though you know might not, not see my name on it, and I don't know, bad vibes are not straight yeah. great vibes. Him, 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 him take care of me regardless. You understand me? I said, be a mood. And don't you reaction when Grammy with? 
Trinity, I think. Trinity? If I can remember well, I don't remember. Honestly, I don't remember. Yeah? But I know he, he, he won a Grammy for one of those two albums. Uh, you, you would have written a, a doctor, I think a doctor. A doctor, okay, I think a doctor, doctor then, yeah. So you are featured on, well, as the credits are not out there, yes, yes. on a Grammy winning yes. production. Yes, exactly. Congratulations, yeah, man. Yeah, man, I can't ask him to, man. We used to drive around in the Lexus, man. Give thanks, man. We used to drive around <laughs> in a Sean Lexus, you know, right? Mm. Lexus van. We used to sit on and we used to sit on and, and, and just write songs right there, you know, the vehicle and thing. Just sit on and just listen rhythm yes. and just build songs, build songs. That's how we used to do it. You know, and even after that, when he came out with I Imperial Blaze. Imperial Blaze, right. The Trinity was his was third, third album. album. That's right. why it was called the Trinity, because the first one was Stage One. Stage One. Then Dutty yeah. Rock, then the Trinity. So the fourth one was Imperial, Imperial Blaze. Blaze, and I co wrote on that one as well. And I did get credit on that one as okay. well. Okay. Ever Blazing is the name of the song. Nice and song. That's, My love is ever blazing, ever blazing, girl, you know I'll never change. As the world turns and the skies burn, you know I'm gonna be there. My love is ever blazing, ever blazing, girl, and you know, you know? Man. Yeah, man. Who else they write for both yeah? So I used to write for Delhi as well, and a bunch of other artists I used to write with Wayne Wonder as well. Matter of fact, right. I have a collaboration with Wayne. Wayne Just to name a few, but not off the top of my head now. You wrote anything for Davio? I wrote with David, but I don't remember writing for him personally, like a whole song, but I remember writing with him because we did collaborations as right. well myself. You we know? soon get to color part, yeah. I, part, part <laughs> I think. I know anything go. You, yeah, as I said, engineer, DJ, yeah. writer, which part you, you feel most comfortable? Shoot. That, that's a good question. Mm. That's a good question because when you're writing, you're in a zone and you're making a. Um, it's basically like planting a seed, and you hope that it's it, it's it's mm -hmm. gonna grow, right? So that's a good aspect and a good feature of the business: writing, good experience. But I would say, probably performing, mm -hmm. recording is good as well because you know you're putting down what you just wrote, or you're basically making. Are cooking the stew right now when you're recording <laughs> and putting in the elements in yeah. your time and your seasoning, time when it's seasoning rather right, right when you're recording it. But I'd say my favorite part of this music period is just performing it because now you're seeing the reaction to what you have created basically. It's just like a chef cooking up his recipe and he serves it and he look to see people reaction when they taste it. Mm. So it's the same thing. When you go here on the stage, you see people reaction to the songs that you wrote. You know, they are giving you a feedback to let you know if you, you are doing well or not. Yeah. So that performing, I would say, is my best, my favorite part of the business. Favorite part of the business. I could go back to some of the, the songs that I know. Yes. Dance floor, Jover Rockwell. Jover Rockwell. Oh, 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 oh. What do you think you're going to do when you see when you step on the dance floor? We are the girl them at and we're ready to party some more. Yeah. Mr. DJ, I'm going to save song, I'm going to save song. Bim! Yo, MTV ready. 106 and Park RIT ready. TV in a dance all around. Bim, bim, bim. Soon. I remember I sang them and you know, exercise them as regular as some it, artists. It, you know what? Yeah. I don't know, man. It's just, I don't remember like I don't remember like the whole song, but mm, I, I remember, remember elements of the song, you know. Mm. But if I get called to do the already, you're ready. I'm gonna be ready, <laughs> all right. So, my promoter them out there, when they're ready, you know. Just know, you know, we're ready for execute, you know. We sticky. We're ready for the assignment, you know. Sticky you know, is another. Sticky. In you know, the streets, grimy and sticky. Jealousy or envy? So, that one now. I know you dig deep for that one day, you know, but sticky. <laughs> sticky. sticky. Bad video. Yeah, sticky was on the bubble up rhythm. Bubble up, right. Yeah, and at that time I was go, going through a time where enough you, you know, go through it where you feel like people are not happy for you. And oh, that's why okay. I made that song, you know? So you basically know street, I'm saying, you know, the streets, sticky. grimy and sticky. Uh -huh. Jealousy and envy I take over the city. You know, the streets, grimy and sticky. Bad mind always want to see your life. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So that's, that's what that song is about, basically. I was feeling like sometimes people are not happy for you, you know, for no reason. People don't know you, and people just wish the worst for you and, and don't want to see good things happen for you, you know. And, and that was transcending in my music, basically, how I felt. And Brother, that's why I did stick it. I know the intense, sir. Yeah, I know the <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> well, see, I, I know them tired that, so. They just did a start. They, they just did a start, I right? I know they tired so much. Trust him or feel it, man. Who, he who feels it knows it, you know? Yeah, man. Bad man no show off is the next song where... Bad man don't show <laughs> off, yes. <laughs> Well, I'm from a place where you never tell it, even where you know it, and even where you have it, oh no, you're not to show it. Bad man don't show off, all when we are both it, we are green and laugh. Well, I'm from a place where you never tell it, even when you know it, and even when you have it, oh no, you're not to show it. Bad man don't show off, all when we are both it, we are green and laugh. Enough man can't back it, so we them slap it. So basically, that song was produced by Hemo and Mo Fire. They are a bunch of, um, they are a couple of uh, Japanese producers, okay, right? And Hemo and Mofire basically are two female producers from out of Japan. Mm. And they called me, they had a rhythm called um, Body 45 at the time. And they basically, you know, enlisted me to record on this rhythm because I'm like the whole Zoom J vibes and thing. And I recorded it. And of course, you know, we shot the mix. The mi um, Marshall Montana was on the rhythm as well, Capleton. Lexus was on the rhythm, Tony Curtis, Tony Curtis. Tony Curtis, yeah. I think the Tony Curtis, Tony Curtis and Marshall. Tony a Curtis and Marshall was a, was a collaboration yeah, on that rhythm as well, and they shot the video right down near uh, Waterhouse, the Damascus, Damascus at the time. Mm -hmm. You know, that was one of my biggest, biggest um, songs. The day oh, today. yeah? Yes. Mm. Yes. You have been away from the music for, for a long time. Yes. And I know that you made that move for family. Yes. And, and nothing chumps that still. But was there any time, or is there any time you sit down and, and, and you wonder if... If things would have worked out differently right. if I'd stayed? A lot of times, I sit down and I wonder how things would work out if I didn't step away and join the military and just stick with the music, you know? But I look at my kids and I see them smile and I'm like, yo, I guess I'll never know. <laughs> right? <laughs> Yeah, well, as long as the family are yeah, right, are right, the right, right, and them, them, and them happy, you know? Mm. Yeah, man. So, you know, you are angling back to the music. Yes, always, always. Yeah. You know, they say that sometimes you don't go back. You have been away for a while now. You, you think, and you know, I'll ask this question to people, and sometimes some of them probably take it as an offense, but it's a real question. You know, we don't yes. really free to ask a question. Ask me, ask me, ask me. Ask me <laughs> Do you think that Zoom J has the wear it all to be successful now where the music is? Yes. I know. It's not a matter of I think, mm -hmm. I know. And the reason why I know this is because whatever I put my mind to, I'll be successful at it. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the mindset that, and if you don't have this mindset as an artist, by knowing that you're gonna make it, then you don't need to be into this business. As an artist, you have to have that mindset. I know I can do it, I will do it. Not I can or I think I'll do it, mm -hmm. I will do it. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, no doubt, I think I have the weights. Of course, it's all, because it's a balance, you know, it's not about talent, it's not about lyrics, right? It's a balance, it's about, it's not only, sorry, it's not only about talent and it's not only, only about, about your lyrics, lyrics. Mm -hmm. but it's also about the business side of it too. And it's all about, and when I say business, being a constant um, professional, it, it's all, it, it's different, um, different aspects of the business that you have to have and balance to be successful. Not just being a bad, bad DJ, but then, you know, you're nasty to people and rude to people and you just have a bad character about you, you're going to hurt you. You know, mm. you have to have the business side about the whole thing with your talent. So nowadays, yeah, I think I would be successful in the business. You know, I would just have to recognize my market, right? And that is, that who, is important. And brother. who to target, mm. right? So man, I'm gonna be up, yes, that's critical. So I'm gonna be up here like Uncle Zoom J right now, and I try to reach, <laughs> and I try to reach out to some like eighteen year old, and I say hey, this, that, and the third, and I try to impress them. Yes, I'm gonna put the music out there that represent me. Now, if they wanna come and follow, so be it. But I'm gonna do the music will basically represent myself well. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And just target a certain audience basically with, with what me I said. Yes. You know? Uh, for the top of my head, Marcia Griffiths, Davil, yes. Assassin, um, Alazir. Alazir. You have done collaboration. Danny English, I think, as well. Yes, yes. 
Um, you know, don't with bling dog. Bling. bling. No, I haven't done any collabs with bling yet. Did a video with bling. Yeah. Did a video with bling. He made a that cabin, a, that cabin a do a, um, do or don't. Do or don't. Yes. Yeah. You have to give a piece of that later. We'll yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. You want cartel and marshal of a collaboration. Yes. Face you, off. Face off. You have done yeah. quite a bit of collabs. A bit of collabs, yes. Is there anybody who is still active in the music who you wouldn't mind going to the studio to go lay down something for the rhythm mode? Definitely. As far as dancehall? Yes. Shoot. Spraga Benz. Spraga. 100%. Mm. Bounty Killer. 100%. Bojo Bantan. 100%. Bean Man, 100%. <laughs> Sean Paul, 100%. And of course, I, I, I mean, I definitely would have recorded with Sasko again. Sasko again. As, again as well. Mm -hmm. two, two university graduates, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Man. <laughs> yes, sir. You know the thing, man. You do something with Delhi Ranks. Yes. Nikki B. Yes. We any wonder. Yes. Are some of them name, them name called just now. Still. Yes, yes. Right. Yes. So, yeah, many people out here, you know, man. Do something with yeah man again looking at the, the 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 musical journey bro what would you say looking at it from when you stepped away is that one thing that when you look at it you make you proud say yes whilst me never continue with this for an extended period of time mm -hmm. me have under my belt yeah i always look at it that way and I always tell my, 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 my friends when, whenever they visit Jamaica with me and stuff, I'll, and them see people like approach me a certain way and zoom, zoom, what's up, you know? And I'm always, zoom, you're popular, boy, man. <laughs> I always tell them, listen, man, I'm going to do some work, boy, you know? I'm going to do some work, you know? So I always have that feeling there about me actually making some form of accomplishment and contribution to the music, mm -hmm. you know, even though I'm in, you know, a, a different field right now for the most part, you know? Yes. Musically. <laughs> Musically. What you not achieve yet? What you hope you achieve what at the time? You know, say I, I haven't achieved a lot of things. Mm -hmm. You know? I haven't achieved, but like hoping to, I don't see what I, I, I hope to achieve though. Mm -hmm. I just do music because I love it. You know, never, never and our mindset for say yo, I'm hope for you achieve this, I'm hope for you this. You know? Really and truly what if I think, you know, me not achieve, of course, you know. Grammy Awards and all that stuff and Billboard number ones and all that good stuff. But do I hope if it happens, it happens. Mm. You know, but just the music for music, you know. And yes. See where it takes me, you know. Yeah. Looking at the journey though, is yes. there anything that you do differently if you get the chance to relive the musical journey? I mean, hear people say this all the time. It's a good thing you ask that question there, you know, because I mean, hear people say this all the time. Like, yo, I wouldn't change nothing for the world. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna tell you this right now. Looking back, just because me, I, it's like me, I look upon myself as a 20 year old coming up back then. Mm. If there's anything that I would change, it probably would be to be more professional at the time. You know, that's what I would change to be mm. more pro because I know what it takes now. Right. So if I, you ever hear people say, if I know then what I, I know, know now, now. Mm. but in the same breath, you'll hear them say, I wouldn't change anything for the world. So why would you say, if I if know, know then? Right, Listen, right. man, the stuff that I know now, yes, that's what I would change in the past. Mm. Right? That's what I would change if, if, I, if, if I could go by the stuff yes. that I know now. Of all the songs that you have recorded, which is a lot, Yes. which one of those songs have done the best for you from a commercial perspective? Sure, I would say shake it. Shake it. Shake it most definitely. Shake it probably steps out. Mm. Uh, yeah. Or, 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 or probably shake it. I shake would say. it. Shake it hundred percent. Yeah. Shake it. Shake it was a theme song at one time for Asylum Nightclub. Right. For ladies' right. night. <laughs> and it went to like number three or number two, I think. On, on the local on charts. The local charts. So, you know. I would say shake it probably. Yeah. Do you have a song in the catalog that resonates with you more than the others? Like something about that song that you keep humming it in your quiet time when you drive, or in your, your meds more than the rest of them? No, not really, you know. Yeah, it all, it yeah, all, depend, me, it all yeah. depends on the vibe that I'm oh, in. I think you all tell me, say, well, I sang that you love them like no, the same way. No, sir. Mm. It all depends on the vibe or the mood that, mm. that I'm in at the time. Sometimes I drive and I listen to all of the. Um, the retro, I've like different mixtapes that people put out from a full blast, put out a mixtape for me as well. 
and re retro mystics or sometimes I listen to those earlier songs just and just reminisce on those times and yes. then you have a time when I'll just listen to new songs that I've recorded because I'm underneath that vibes oh, okay you know mm. so it's all depend on the mood that I'm in you know yes <laughs> what are your latest releases is shell shop Shell Shop with Alice, Alice yes. That video was, and thing and thing. Yes, and thing. that was 2018. I did 2018. Shell, 2018, I did that song, did that video. It was a great song. That was the last video you, you, you did? No. No. I actually okay. did video. I, I did, um, what do you call it? Jamaica. Mm -hmm. um, no Problem. I did a song. Right, Jamaica, Jamaica no, problem, no Problem, right? I did the video for it as well. You know, a song I'm basically I express my love for Jamaica and how great Jamaica it, it is, basically. And I released an album in 2020, October of 2020, of course. You don't know in the heart and the midst of Corona and all that good stuff. Yes. And it was distributed by 1RPM. And the title track for that album was a song called Baby No Way. And I shot a video right here in Jamaica. And it was shot by different locations. And the video director was um, Jay Parkworth out, oh, okay. of, out of England. He came <coughs> down and shot that video. So basically that would be my latest uh, music video. Um, mm. And that was shot 2019. That okay. video was shot 2019. 2019. Yes. Mm. So, is there anything in the pipelines? Yes. We got a flow soon. Yes. So, right now, I'm currently promoting a song called Big Gold Chain Big on yeah. Cassette Jones' Giggy Rhythm, right? Same, you know, rhythm. Right. Spra Spraga is on the rhythm and a bunch of other, other artists. Wayne Wanda is on the rhythm. Mother General and so forth. Daily Ramps is on the rhythm as well, right? Version, but my song on the rhythm is called Big, Big Gold Chain. And that's a song I'm promoting right now. Big Gold Chain, Big Gold Chain. Y'all them love up my Big Gold Chain. Ox Elian, Ox Elian. Y'all them love up my Big Gold Chain. Big Gold Chain, Big Gold Chain. Y'all them love up my Big Gold Chain. So let's check it out. That's what I'm promoting right now. It's basically on the Giggy rhythm, so it's a 90s rhythm. And the reason why I sang about Big gold chain is because the big gold chain is basically synonymous with dance hall culture mm, in the early true 90s. True that, true. Whenever an artist bust at the time, whenever an artist start making a little more money before him buy the car and the bike, the first thing he's going to get is big, big gold, gold chain. Shit. Big gold chain was basically <laughs> like the validity, right? It yeah. shows that you arrive. So I was like, you know what? This is a 90s rhythm. Let me sing about something that is basically relevant to the 90s. And so I just sing about the big gold chain basically. Mm. So it will promote you now, you know? Yeah. Zoom, do you have a favorite DJ? Shoot, I have a few favorite DJs. Mm. So it's hard to say I have a favorite, favorite DJ, you know, but I have a few. You know, I mean, I want to say one DJ and then I then, have a few favorite DJs. That's all I can say. The, <laughs> no, DJ, the, DJ, the DJs on my list before are my favorite DJs. So you already know Spraga Benz, right? Sean Paul, Sasko, Bounty Killer, Bojo Bantan, Beanie Man. You know what I'm saying? Tanya Stevens. Tanya. Yes. A legendary. Tanya. Legendary Tanya Stevens. Mm. Right? And Tanya Stevens is basically to me in the top writers. One of the in the top five writers of all time. In, Easily, brother. Easily. And I'm, I'm male not talking, or female. Male or female. We're coming to that Stevens conclusion in a long time. Tanya Stevens in the top five. Mm. And when I say top five, in any order. Right? Yes, I agree sir. with you. All right. Yes, 100%. Liberal. Yes. Favorite yes, rhythm? Sir. Diwali. Diwali. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. Pick up yourself, Lenky. You know, funny enough, Lanky as I said that, I'm going to read somewhere where you said that, yeah, Lenky make Diwali, you know? No. That journalist who, who wrote that, you need to find them. <laughs> me and Lenky never make no rhythm because yeah, man. I don't know how to make rhythm. I know better still, but me, I tell you, so, it is out there. So, me, me set the record straight. <laughs> me never said nothing like that ever. Yeah, well. Maybe they thought that I, I, uh, I helped to make the rhythm, but mm. I never helped to make the rhythm. I just basically helped to record. I recorded. Um, some of the songs. So, right, as I said earlier. Basically. Yeah, man. They probably yes. adapt them here and probably adapt them here never and know if you express it. Right, right, right. right, so right, right. Make, make it clear <laughs> enough and teach them, he's going to make the message reach them. Right? <laughs> Lanky Bill, do all the rhythm. And Zoom J, record some song on the rhythm. Mm. All right. Yes, sir. How many youths? Two. Two. Yes. My girl. And your um, boy. 13 years old. And my boy, you know, my son, he's eight years old right now. Mm. Yes, sir. It's like you don't know the truth. 
Done with the, the street? Yeah, kid street. The kid street, yes, man. That's it. That's it. Two, two, what I'm saying? Two, two better than two, two many. many, man. Yeah, that's it. We have the peer. So yeah. we're good to go, right? It's where I survive. Yes, sir. Mm. So, bro, you are, as we said, focusing now on getting back a foothold in everything. That's yes. the reality yeah. of the thing, because you have been away. Been away, yes. Been away, been, been away physically, but mm. not spiritually. Right? And not emotionally. We always are folk we always are tuned into the music. Right. You know, no just not see me visually just not hear me. But we are watch where I go on. We always are watch where I go on and upbeat with the current trends and current new crop of artists and all that good stuff, you know. Yes I so we are do the thing. Mm -hmm. We are do the thing. For the people who want to get in touch with Zoom J. Yes. For dub plates, bookings, whatever it is how they reach there. So for bookings, it's bookzoomj at gmail.com. That's bookzoomj at gmail.com. For the fans, if you want to reach me, if you want to see what's going on with me, of course, it's zoomj music on IG, right? Mm. Or zoomj on Facebook or zoomj on uh, Twitter. Do or don't? Do or don't? Do? Should I do or do it, man? Shoot. <laughs> well, after once upon a time, not long ago, once upon a time, not long ago, once upon a time, not long ago, not long ago. After me meet a sexy lady down at Timbuktu, tell her I she say, Oh, the do. Me tell her, I say, I want to put her on the bedroom curfew. And she said, No, she don't know what to do. So I ask her if she a Christian or if she a Joe, come on, and give her a small little view. She tell me, say, She married, false them just with you. So now she don't know what to do. Me see her a new Kingston, one night, quarter to two. I do business by the water, look. Couldn't believe, <laughs> say, I see I'm good to show. I said, No, she don't know what to do. So I tell her, Tell me if you do what you don't. And if you don't, please, baby, tell me. If you will lay your bone, girl, tell me if you do what you don't. And if you don't, please, baby, tell me if you will lay your bone. Come on, tell me if you do what you don't. If you don't, please, baby, tell me if you will lay your bone. Girl, tell me if you do what you don't. If you don't, please, baby, tell me if you will lay your bone. When they are do shopping pan fit up in your meet a channel girl near Peng Low. Ask her, you shouldn't want to go about that. Soon, talk me down. And she said, no, she don't know what to do. So I take her to Jamaica. Carry go match her own above you, <laughs> right? And she said, no, she don't know what you do. <laughs> yeah, man. Remind us of your rank. Yes, Sergeant First Class. Sergeant First Class. Yes, the U.S. Army. Go up yourself, man. Yes, sir. So, what they are trying to be, we are trying to be, to inspire um, the youths, the next generation, especially for the youth in the inner city, the ghetto youths, right, so to speak. More than just like them, for just use me as a perfect example that it, it's not where you come from it's where your mind is and where your heart is right and what you aspire to be right i was there showed all of the violence showed all of the destruction i was there wake up three o'clock in the morning looking at my yard and see a man with a rifle i look out i look down the road i look up the road for see an enemy we want to do something to and basically up the street i walk it down the street and we have to basically tiptoe for jump and bus for go school I was there, through the poverty, through the violence, but I never met that distract me, I never met that, make me lose focus. I always know what I want to do and what I can be, and, and me is a perfect example. A water house I come from, from 35 West Bay Farm Road, and my basically just focus, I basically just aspire for greatness, and I basically just tell myself, say, I can do it, regardless of who never believes I could and do it, I just tell myself, say, I can do it. You know, I'm not going to have that same mindset. That it's not where you're from. You can rise up, right, and do great things and be great things and make a great impact on this world. You know? It's a yes, true sir. inspiration, bro. Yes, I. True inspiration. Yes, I. Zane, um, you know, a lot of stereotypes in the music. Yes. We say Sasko do it. We say you do it. Yes. And keep the thing on a level, brother, brother. Yes. Yeah, man, congratulations on all the Respect. achievement. Respect. Respect. You, you pay your dues to the music. You pay my dues to the music. You understand? And I know that you want more to the music. Of course. And the one I ask you before I forget, before I done, though. Yes. The business side of the music has something yes. beat, not for the man them. Of course. How are things, re you and your publishing and them something there, royalty and things? Yes. It's from, from early out in the music, you know, I always basically educate myself about uh, the business side and 
as far as royalties and publishing and that stuff. So I, my publishing company being set up from before I even had my first hit song. You know? What? So, so when the song started coming up to this day, <laughs> up to this day, I still get your statements. Uh, I still get my statements every three months. You know, I get an email or whatever saying so and so, whatever deposited this, that, and the third. So on, good man. So. The business part of it, you know, you have to um, educate yourself about that, hundred percent. Cause people come around and try to bamboozle you too, and try to trick you too. So you gotta be aware of the business so you can see that when it happens. And no matter how good you want a person be, that same person too might try to trick you too and take your stuff. So you gotta recognize that when you see it. And the only re the only way you can recognize that is if you learn about the business aspect of the business because it is a business. Yes, we jump up on stage and we record and we hang out and chill and the girls and all that stuff, but at the end of the day, guess what? It's a business, all right? Big brother, yes, I sir. appreciate the opportunity because yes, I don't sir. think you have done such an in-depth no. documentation of the journey before. Never, never. We before. give thanks, man. Am teach I, them. Am I agile with the Yes, sir, teach them. <laughs> You Big are the yourself. only one who have the capability to reach them. My thing. You understand me? Mark X. Big up yourself. Big up yourself, you, Mark X. You make a thing possible. All right. Brother, brother, go and do the thing. Yes, sir. And as we say, me I look out for it. Yes, sir, you still have it. Still have it. Never lose it. Never lost it. My thing. Yes, sir. Congratulations on all yeah, the achievements. Yeah, man. And we're Big proud of the man, brother, brother. Yeah, man. We're proud of the man. Really we're proud of the man. Really appreciate you. I'm very grateful, you know. And I'm very honored, you know, to, for you to give me this opportunity and this very great show, you know? Zoom J, are you giving yes, me the yes, opportunity? Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Pick up yourself, man. Yes, sir. Art alone, see? Art alone. Zoom! Let me give you no, they teach them. News, they teach them. Blues, no boy, one cruise, and I teach them. Shoes, I up and I teach them. Style, them I use. Zoom! The world I wonder how we got it like that. The world I wonder how oh, teach them a lucky like that. I be a big tune and play a custom chatter like that. Build board chart, yeah, mood for tapping like that. But mine say we career won't stop it like that. I try to stop a food, but to hold my shatter like that. Have a big talk and we are go back here like that. Teach them. You make the message reach them. Zoom J is my name. To be a tug DJ is my game. Man from garden and matches lay me here. Them a shout. Zoom, 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 zoom. Teach them my name. And to be a tug DJ is my game. Don't the place Ready, we are gonna done it again. I make the world shout. Zoom, 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 zoom. Zoom J is making his entry. The ladies and the dance a are plenty. Teach them already made the entry and putting the people in a frenzy. Zoom to the right now, shake it, shake it. And to the left now, shake it, shake it. And to the front now, shake it. Teach them zoom. So we say step up in the ladies' club and them a shake it. The whole of them a dance about dub. Them a shake it. Y'all a give we kiss and hug. Them a shake it. Teach them a play big dub and them a shake it. Champagne in a hand and them a shake it. Gucci and Louis Vuitton and them a shake it. Y'all in a G-string and tongue and them a shake it. I listen, teach them song and them a shake it to the left. Shake it to the right. Shake it all day. Teach them, make them shake it all night. Shake it in the dark. Shake it in the light. Shake it whether you're black, brown, purple, or white. Zoom! Teach them! Let the message reach them. Teach them! Hey, yo, hello! Send the message and make it reach them. It's teach them right here. Warlord representing. Thank you for watching. Like the video before you go. Please subscribe if you haven't done so. And remember to share the video with your friends and family. And browse the channel for more quality content. Until next time, walk good, my friends. Teach them!